tonight. Chromebox, your next meeting. Clout becomes more social and LinkedIn's revenue is up, but shares are down. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight Show 19 for Thursday, February the 6th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com. Learn what you want, when you want, with access to over 2,000 high quality online courses, all for one low monthly price. Try it for free for seven days. Visit lynda.com slash TN2. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash TN2. I'm Tanya Hall. Let's get right to the tech feed. Google Video Hangouts got more business friendly today. The company announced a $999 product called Chromebox for meetings. It features a Chromebox, which is a desktop computer, running Chrome OS as its operating system. It also comes with an HD camera, microphone, and speaker system, plus a remote control. You have to supply your own display. Google Apps help you schedule and manage meetings, and Hangouts provides the video conferencing function. Chromebox for Meetings allows 15 participants. Also today, Firespotter Labs announced that its Uber conference service now works with Google Hangouts, enabling up to 100 people to call in to a single Hangout by phone. And finally, a company called Video today rolled out a service called Video H2O that connects Google Plus Hangouts to existing video conference systems from companies like Cisco, Polycom, and Avea. The social influence ranking site Clout is becoming a content creation sharing site. In other words, more like a social network. Clout is a controversial website and mobile app that uses social media analytics to rank users. A Clout score, which is a number between 1 and 100. It's supposed to show how much influence you have on sites like Twitter, Facebook, and Google+. Now, a new Create section shows a stream of content based on topics you're interested in and also that your friends are interested in. Like Reddit, you can click on a thumbs up or a thumbs down to rate articles. Your activity with this content helps Clout understand your interest and your engagement also boosts your Clout score. The new Clout also starts with an article recommendation, but it's plotting an expansion in other types of shared shareable posts, such as quotes, photos, and questions. LinkedIn is up, then down. Today, the company released its Q4 earnings and beat expectations. The revenue was $447.2 million, up from analyst predictions, of $437.8 million. But in after-hours trading, LinkedIn is way down, almost 12%, to just below $200 a share. This stems from concerns over the company's growth potential. Also today, LinkedIn announced plans to buy a job search site, Bright, for $120 million. A strategic move surely meant to beef up its job-seeking functionality. Coming up, you can get hacked in Sochi faster than a skier on a downhill run. And next, we are joined by Martin Giles from The Economist, who's here to talk about how Apple might be getting into the health tech field. But first, this episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com. With lynda.com's easy to follow video, video tutorials, you can learn at your own pace and on your own terms. From industry experts, lynda.com subscription members get unlimited access to thousands of online video courses covering a wide range of technical skills, creative techniques, and business strategies. Want to improve your photography, master new software, or boost your web design skills? Maybe you're learning programming. At lynda.com, you'll find top quality videos on hundreds of different subjects. You can watch your computer, tablet, or mobile device. The instructors are accomplished professionals, experts in their field, who are passionate about teaching, and each course is structured so you can learn from start to finish or just jump in and find a quick answer. It's only $25 a month for access to the entire lynda.com course library, or for only $37.50 a month, you can subscribe to the premium plan, which also includes ex exercise files and 
You try lynda.com right now with a free seven day trial. You can go to lynda.com, that's lynda.com dash TN2 to access the entire library that's over 2,000 courses free for seven days. That's L Y N D A dot com slash T N two. I'd like to welcome Martin Giles, the U.S. technology correspondent of The Economist. He writes regularly for the magazine and is a frequent contributor to the magazine's business and technology blogs. Martin, what is Apple up to in the mobile health space? Well, we think you know Apple has given us several indications that it's uh, it's about to play in the healthcare space. Um, for a start, it's uh, registered a patent for a heartbeat sensor. It started hiring loads of physiologists and sort of medical people uh, who will presumably advise it on what it can do in, in the medical area. And thirdly, you know, there's lots of rumors around that iOS 8, the new operating system we roll out later this year, a new version of its iOS system, will have something called a health book in it, which is a, a healthcare app. But there's lots of other players in already in this space. I mean, you know, you've got Nike Fuel Band, you've got uh, a Jawbones Up, so sort of in the wrist sensor area there's lots of players there and then there's a whole series of sort of specialized companies trying to develop sensors and uh, and wearable devices that will work with iPhones or other mobile phones to to sort of monitor your body so it's very crowded Apple loves to disrupt massive industries what chance does it have of doing this in the healthcare Oh, yes, it does. It loves nothing more than to turn everything upside down. And I think healthcare is sort of ripe for disruption. You know, it's a three trillion dollar a year industry here in the United States, or at least three trillion dollars is spent on healthcare by us and, and the government. And so, uh, you know, there's, there's a very big market there, but it's tricky. It's, it's difficult for several reasons. I mean, first of all, it's highly regulated. And so you have, you know, the FDA has to approve lots of you know, the devices that would be sort of monitoring people people's health. You know, uh, but lots of players are coming in. There's Google has a wearable contact lens it's developing that will sort of monitor uh, your the, the sort of uh, content of your tears to see if you're, if you're a diabetic, whether you're taking your meds regularly. So um, you know, there's lots of devices coming on, but they've got to get approval. And then secondly, you have doctors and hospitals who are notoriously conservative when it comes to adopting new technologies. And you know, they, they get paid for seeing people, right? The more people who come in the better so if, if somebody's got a, a remote monitoring device and they can do it from home they get paid less so I, I suspect they won't be too keen on that thanks for chatting with us Martin you can read more of Martin's work at economist.com and we end with this for the thousands of athletes and fans who are headed to Sochi for the Winter Olympics they should expect to be hacked the minute they turn on their devices this is a warning going out to Everyone going to Russia? A news crew from NBC put it to the test with two new computers and a smartphone. Reporter Richard Engel said almost immediately we were hacked in less than 24 hours. The U.S. State Department warns visitors to have no expectation of privacy, even in hotel rooms. In Russia, it's legal for the government to electronically snoop on anyone inside the country. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. And remember to subscribe to this podcast at twit.tv TN2. Our next newscast is tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific. I'm Tanya Hall. Good night. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.